and welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'd like to introduce my special guest, Judy Goodman. Judy is an award-winning, international, best-selling author of Journey, The Quest of the Soul. Highly recommend this book. Um, she also works in both the spirit and physical worlds and walks in both of these worlds at both times. She's here today to answer our profound questions. Now, Judy, hello? I'm here, Mary Ann. Thank you. What an exciting time to get to be with you. I'm so excited. Well, thank you. I am excited to have you as my guest. So um, I want to start off by reading something that another radio show host said about you um, that really grabbed my attention. This host said, I think I did my best two hours of radio, though I had no time frame or reference for someone who says, you can ask me about anything and with whom there are no boundaries. Now, that's a pretty <laughs> strong statement. What does that Indeed mean? It is. Yeah, what does that mean to those of us who are listening to the show? <laughs> well, I don't know exactly what it will mean to everyone. Uh, it was a very kind statement, and this was a uh, big uh, radio guy, a big host, had an extremely large audience, so I think that the statement in itself was very complimentary. Uh, what it means is, for me personally, it means that there are no boundaries. There is no place that I cannot go to talk about anything. And, you, you know, you, it said in the introduction that I walk in both worlds, and that is true. Since the day of my birth, I've literally had one foot in spirit, one foot in physical, and so I have had kind of a dual walk in this life, and that's why it's so easy for me to address any topic almost at any level, and I have a lot of fun with it, too. It sounds like you do. Now, could you expand a little bit more on just your history? Um, you said that you've had this, this giftedness um, you know, since birth. Yes. Uh, since I was born, I've been this way. It was not something that I grew into, and oddly enough, I came in with all of my information. I, I don't study, have never studied under another person. In fact, some people refer to me as the teacher of the teachers, but it really wasn't until I was nine years old, Marianne, that I really understood the uniqueness of who and what was a little bit different about me. I was still seeing spirit and little angels, and my playmates had little spirits and little angels around them. I thought that they could see the same thing I could see, but about the age of nine is when I realized that the way I describe it is that the light in their eyes started to grow dim. That was when they were disconnecting from the other side, and then I began to realize that mine was still there and mine was very unique. So truthfully, we're all born with the gift, and many of us still have access to that. We don't always utilize it, and sometimes when it happens, it scares us a good bit, and so we sort of shut it down, but mine's been there always, and with it, Mary Ann, comes a tremendous degree of accountability and responsibility because when we see, uh, you know, people are always asking things. So the, the point of that is for us to be very present, very accountable with people when we're working with them and talking with them. But it's been a lot of fun. I get to meet some very interesting people. So, yeah, I've had some fun with it, too. It most definitely sounds like you have. So um, you had mentioned that when you see something, um, that's not something that you're always supposed to discuss um, with <laughs> your gift. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that does happen. Um, you know, sometimes when you're working with someone, you may see an event. And for me, uh, and, and this is not about a person's religion, but... Uh, I, I am a religious person myself, but I'm not about a person's religion when I'm working with them and talking to them. But if I am working with someone and I see an event that troubles me a little bit, I silently to myself will say, Father, am I supposed to say something? And I wait for the answers. And 
at my age in life, I have certainly learned how to discern and how to listen to that and how to be careful. You know, just because we see and feel things, it's not always a good idea to just throw that information out onto people because sometimes it will scare them to death. And if we don't have the ability to give them a real good understanding of what we're saying, then we may be doing the wrong thing. Mm. Well, that definitely makes sense. I mean, with every, you know, with everything that we do on, you know, in the physical world, there is a sense of responsibility. I can see that being able to visualize things, you know, to actually see things in the spirit world, there's also a sense of responsibility in what it is that we say and, and how we act. So that, that you know, makes perfect sense. Marianne, before we get too far down the road with this, I want to congratulate you on your show, and I want to give a shout-out to people that are in Boston that are listening. But according to my email, you've got listeners this evening from Singapore, from people that are from Puerto Rico. You've got listeners that are tuning in tonight all across the country. This is just so exciting, and thank you for letting me be a part of this and... I understand that you have got some tremendous guests coming up. You've got a Ken Elliott who's got an incredible book. You've got a Nancy who mm-hmm. was an atheist, an atheist, and died and went to heaven. Can you imagine? Heaven. What a story. Yeah. It's, a, it's quite a tremendous story. And thank you very much, Judy. I greatly appreciate um, your kind words and having you on my show and, you know, and getting things kicked off here, especially because you are – in my view, one, I, I believe you're one of the most gifted people we have walking the planet right now. And I know that's a strong statement, but well, I very use kind. those words very you. carefully. Very carefully. So I'm, but I'm going to go out on a limb here, Judy, and ask Uh-oh. you something. Uh-huh. I understand you're the kind of person we can ask anything. So for our <laughs> listeners, I want to ask you, are ghosts real? Oh, my goodness. Here we are so close to Halloween, and you're going to ask me the ghost stories. <laughs> yes. It's, it's a perfect time. <laughs> and Indeed it is. And, yes, they are real. You know, I did a show with Dan Aykroyd many years ago, who's very famous or infamous uh, for his mm-hmm. show with uh, Ghostbusters, which is coming back out again soon. But, yes, indeed, ghosts oh, yeah. are real. That's fabulous. Now, um, and you see them all the time. Well, I do see them. I've learned how to filter out a lot of activity. The fact that I can see things all the time, that could be very distracting. It could be unnerving, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I've, I've created this filtering system that, um, you know, kind of protects me. Well, just imagine, Marianne, if a if I was there in uh, in Colorado where you are, we went to one of the great malls that you guys have got out there and went in, I would have things coming at me with such an intensity and in such a volume that it could be crippling. Uh, and there are people that I know that don't understand the process of energy, how to protect yourself, how to move it around one thing or another, and they have difficulty with that. So. You know, energy is its a big thing that's out there, and a ghost is, in fact, energy that uh, will have somewhat of a form, uh, you know, to, to show me who it is. And if they know that I can see them, many times they will want to be seen and recognized. There are people that will talk with them and pass messages on. I don't work with it quite that way, but I do mm-hmm. see that, and sometimes it's a help if I were working with a client, then... Perhaps someone who had passed away and they were in a tremendous grief process, just being able to talk about that with them might help me to, you know, bring some closure to the grief that they were involved in. So ghosts are real. Uh, You know, I've got really good, fun stories about ghosts. Sometimes we'll get into some of that, but they are real. Um, And as in all things, Marianne, you've got the good, the bad, and the ugly. So where we've got good Mm -hmm. things that are floating around out there, don't just open yourself up for every little thing that passes your way because, you know, it might not be your best friend, although it may be showing you the image that you want to see. You can't always trust it. So I, I don't subscribe to people having Ouija boards and 
trying to bring things in like that on their own. It could be a, a mistake for some people. Oh, definitely. And I'm glad that you brought that up, you know, that discernment um, piece that goes with and making that kind of contact if, if someone's looking to further develop that. Um, and just, just for, you know, your walk, how it is that you discern things moving forward. Um, so, yeah. Now, have you had a near-death experience yourself? Actually, I have had a near-death experience. You would think that someone that came in, born walking in both worlds, would maybe bypass some of those things, but that's not true for me. I did have seven years of major surgery almost the same day every year for seven years. The last of those seven surgeries, I was clinically dead for seven minutes, went to the other side, and that will be an interesting story that we'll get into at another time. Remember everything that I saw, had conversations, and, you know, time does not exist on that side, and seven minutes here uh, equaled six, eight, nine months on the other side, and incredible things, and I thought about it later, and I wondered why that had happened. I was given some specific reasons as to why it had happened, but mostly it was to reiterate to me that this is where I'm supposed to be, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, and if you will, it might have been a crash course to reconnect more fully and say, okay, you can't give up, you're going back, you've still got a lot of things to do. So, yeah, I did have um, an NDE as we call it, or a near-death experience. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing, that experience that you went through. And um, there's part of that that I'm, I've just made a note about, and I'll have to wrap around back to that later. It's just your answer is very interesting, and we're definitely going to talk about that a little bit, uh, a little bit more later. Well, you know, now, Marianne, uh, it mm-hmm. also reminds me of a guest you've got coming up, Nancy, who was an atheist by her own profession, by by her own statement, Mm -hmm. who had a near-death experience. She went to heaven, came back, it changed her life. So, you know, what a person's belief system is, is not important, and you don't have to have a near-death experience to change or whatever. But And and I'm, I'm saying that just to alert people that are listening to you of the variety and the volume of content that you're going to be covering on your shows and just wanting to want to let them know there's so much information there's you know there's a limit to what we can cover in an hour but we can (laughs) peak your information peak your excitement if you will to have you come back and talk about such things as near death definitely well and there's you're right especially with um, having you as a guest, I mean, there there isn't a topic that's you know that's off limits, and I've been getting emails coming in um, asking some questions here. So, and we'll get to that um, after we we go through our break here. But one of the things, and I hear you talk a lot about you're talking about a lot of things here, Judy, and you mentioned this once before, but I just want to I just want to kind of pin this on the wall. You, this is not about religion, is that correct? That is absolutely, positively correct. Thank you for reiterating that point. It is not about religion. In fact, I love religions. I find an element of truth that weaves through almost everything that we believe, and I don't question what a person believes. I like to know what they believe. If, if, I, if they're a client and I'm working with them, sometimes knowing what their religious preference is. It may give us a little bit more to work with, but the things that I see, the things that I know, the things that I lecture about, the things that I teach, it's not about religion. I'm not trying to create a following. In fact, the bottom line to me is empowerment to people. It's to allow people to be the best they can be, to find what their own true path is. And, and, you know, have your own belief system. Whatever it is, that's mm-hmm. what you should work with. Definitely, most definitely. Okay, well, I, I just wanted to cover that because I know sometimes people might get a little hung up on one thing or another, um, and, and I did hear you say that this wasn't about religion. I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, loud and clear. Um, 
One of the other things that keeps coming up that I see quite often, people are talking about vibrational shift, and we're in a vibrational shift, and it's happening right now. What does that mean for us? <laughs> well, it doesn't necessarily mean a, a good old-fashioned California earthquake, although I guess some of us <laughs> might feel it that way. But uh, really, the first major shift that I was aware of was about four years ago. Uh, there was a real shift where there was a different look to the skies. The feeling of energy that was around us was different. It seemed that more people were trying to find what their path is. They want to know, am I on my path? Am I doing what I need to do? You know, the earth is a living entity, and we, we sort of owe it a lot more respect than we give it at times, but it is a, a, sure. a living entity that has its own lifetime, its own shift, its own vibration, and it is mm -hmm. making slight corrections itself as we as human beings are shifting where we are a bit more open to some of the um, information that's out there that will help us be better in our family, better in our work, better as an individual, better as a human being. So there is a higher consciousness that is opening up, and it's not something that's designed to control. It's a higher consciousness that when we move into that, we will actually be better people, better able to do better things for ourselves, for the planet, for each other. So it's a, it's a good thing that's happening, and we are shifting more. It means that the energy around us, is different. The energy of the earth is different. You know, we have, and talking about earthquakes, we've had fires out of control, floods. South Carolina has just gone through this massive flooding that has never even happened there. And we're hearing so many reports of things that are happening all over the world where there is a shift of vibration. We are pushing against things that are hurtful, harmful, and oppressive. So, we are part of that movement, and the earth itself is part of that movement. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with you 100% on that. You, know, you can see the, the shifts and the changes that are happening and taking place. Um, I, and, and I'm sure you've seen this as well in just the general consciousness, and, and aside from the planet itself, the general consciousness of people who are, you know, as you say, trying to be kinder to one another, you know, things that are little, um, we, we have uh, repeats of things that are coming up that something that as a society that we need to address, um, one being gun control or some kind, of, some kind of uh, limits with guns. Um, so we've, we've got all these things coming up, but at the same time, I have ran, uh, recently ran into two different individuals who are going through med school and they are looking to combine both the medical field, traditional medical field, with more um, of a spiritual approach to it, with it, either if it's laying hands on people, doing some kind of, you know, Reiki or something along that lines in combination with general medicine. And I just find it, I mean, it's, it's a really great time that we're living in. In that regard, Marianne, I really do agree with you, and, and I have seen so many reports. I know so many people in the medical field where uh, prayer is finding its way back in. And, I'm, again, I'm not making this about religion, but when people find things that work, whether it's in a traditional form or a chant or whatever it happens to be, it's our belief system that will lift us up through some of the challenging things that we have and Whatever that belief system is, I believe it is finding a way back into our medicine. And as you said, there are some, a, a lot of our younger people that are going in. They seem to be more open to, um, uh, to a less total traditional, but a combination of things. Mm -hmm. I know so many young people that are traveling all over the world. One young man who has spent time in Africa, India, Australia, finding himself, which expands his mind and opens his heart to things that are not cast in stone, meaning that he's willing to get out and look at things differently and open his heart 
to doing things just a little bit differently. And you did say something about gun control, and and I'm pretty sure you and I feel the same way. We're not really supporting or saying that we are behind gun control per se. We're just saying that that is one of the issues that many people are concerned about. And because these things continue to happen, hopefully it will cause us to talk about it. This is a very interesting discussion. Judy, we're going to have to pause here for a quick break. Um, You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, and we'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient Secrets of Manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com Ben Wexler is a gifted leadership development and strategy consultant for professionals who want to transform their organizations and careers. Through a uniquely personalized set of processes, participants discover their unique knowledge, how to leverage that knowledge and experience, and then put it all together with a global strategy. You're more valuable, your organization is more valuable, and the change is viral. Contact Ben at Judy Goodman's award-winning author and international best-selling um, author of Journey, The Quest of the Soul. So, Judy, I have some yes, questions ma'am. here from a couple people that emailed in. Okay. And it's about the afterlife. That's so always a good topic. Questions. Yeah, it, it, there's a lot, lot to talk about there. One of the questions was, does it hurt when we pass? Mm, Good question. Good question. Does it hurt to die? Well, Mm -hmm. Marianne, the the actual act of dying does not hurt. But now, hold on before you jump to conclusions. Mm -hmm. There is pain that will... Uh, affect the body depending on what the cause of death is. There will be pain that the body will go through up to that moment when you are finally separating from the physical body, but the actual act of dying is completely painless, and a person that has been in that death process for a good while, perhaps they are uh, in a coma, comatose, or you know they've had some lingering illness, Uh, they start separating. The soul will start separating from the body, and it will come and go, but it's still attached until that last breath. But even when they are separating, the body is going to be breaking down. Those of us that are around 
uh, you know, comforting and being there with them, we will see the body hurting or moving around or thrashing around. The good news is, is that the soul has started separating and is not aware of what is happening, what is going on. So while there can be pain in the body, depending on the illness that you're dealing with, that goes up to a point when it finally comes time, it's a complete surrender. It's uh, motionless, weightless. You just simply drift and go and is an astoundingly beautiful experience, no matter what your religious preference is. But even having said that, if you have a strong religious preference, you will be embraced with that when you cross over. So you're not going to lose anything. We don't fall off into an abyss or just wind up saying, geez, I wonder where everybody went. There will always be someone to greet you. No one ever dies alone, no matter what the circumstances are. Well, that's good to know. So if my belief system is that Jesus or Buddha or uh, Mother Mary or my angels are going to be there when I pass or a specific family member, they will show up? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what will happen. You will be embraced with whatever your belief system is. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Good question. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And and the next question we have here, do we reincarnate? Ah, the proverbial reincarnation question. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Well, I certainly do believe in it because I've been there and I have done that more than a few times and I have memory. Uh, I'm a trained, thoroughly trained hypnotherapist that have worked with some people that have taken them back in time a little bit to help them uh, resolve what I call past life carryover into this life, meaning that if they didn't finish something up the way they wanted to in another lifetime, uh, they have that opportunity to come back and address it again in another way. But, yeah, reincarnation is very real. Um, it, you know, for those of us that don't believe in it, it's no big deal and nothing's going to change, doesn't matter. But I have had extremely professional people come to me with uh, peculiar things happening in their life that they have no way to address. And let's say that they would not have believed in past life carryover, reincarnation or anything, and yet that particular tool was utilized to help them save their life because of issues that they were having. So not believing in it is not the end of the world, but sometimes opening your mind up to that possibility could change the world that you live in. So very good question. You've got a good audience there coming in with some really good questions. Well, and and I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly because I I just need a moment to think about what you're saying in regards to past life carryover. So we come, if we've done something in another lifetime, that then can show up in our uh, the present lifetime that we're having and kind of color it. So that way we are either exhibiting some issues. Let's say I'm afraid of heights, and something happened in a past life where, like, I jumped off a cliff. Is that something that yeah. can be addressed in this lifetime and dealt with? Well, yes, certainly it can be addressed. And, you know, Marianne, there are many documented cases now about children that are speaking languages that they do not understand or fears and mm-hmm. uh, tormenting terrors that can be addressed by getting to the bottom of that. But, you know, reincarnation, past life carryover can show up in a number of ways. Nowadays we... We can watch something like The Voice on TV and we can hear these incredible voices or we hear, see a six-year-old sit down, a a real prodigy playing the piano. So Mm -hmm. where does that come from? It begs us to think, wow, who was that child before? Because they they don't have any training, no education, and yet they sit down and will play classical music. So Past life carryover can show up in any number of different ways, not always a bad thing. Sometimes we paint well because perhaps we were a painter in another lifetime. So it it can have some really good things, too. Oh, and that would then explain, I know it's got the, it could have the negative side, but then it has the positive side. There was a video floating around YouTube for a while of an infant 
she still had, I believe the little girl still had her diapers on, and she was climbing up a little rock wall, a little rock climber. <laughs> and Oh, I saw that. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Totally amazing. It was amazing to watch. Just And she just, she just figured it out. She's still wearing diapers, can't even talk, and just, you know, went up this wall like, you know, like she was born to do that, and that was her thing, you know? And well, you know, there's before. another very interesting story about, a man um, has written a book, it's called Someone Else's Yesterday, that uh, was a firefighter in this life, and he has a certain facial feature, beards, he's got scars on his body that he can't explain, and he was having trouble, and he went for hypnotherapy and found out that he was one of the generals that was in Atlanta, Georgia, and there's even a statue of him, and it's just pretty incredible at some of the oh, wow. things that will come out of, and this man is as reputable as anyone could possibly be, had nothing to gain by going through this and perhaps even had a lot to lose by going through it, but it helped him to begin to understand mm-hmm. what was going on in his own life. So it's a pretty amazing thing. I can imagine this would be a very private thing that most people would um, journey on their own to um, you know, discover or work through just because of, you know, that whole factor of, you know, what are people going to say that it was this person 200 years ago that went through this thing, you know? Exactly. Experience. Exactly. But yeah. it also brings us back to that topic of hypnosis, though, which is to say you don't always use a, a, a wonderful tool like that just for past life therapy. Sometimes you can go back into your early childhood and find out some distress or something that happened that you are still working through the trauma, so we don't always use that tool just for past life. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. to go back into our most recent life to get to the bottom of things that we're dealing with in this lifetime. So not everything is going to yeah. come from another lifetime. Sometimes it really and truly is just what your experiences have been in this lifetime. Now, there is a school of thought that um, when you do past life uh, regression work, you know, you have to be very careful about what it is that you uncover or that you bring forward if the person's ready to, um, it, you know, experience that, deal with that, you know, move through that. Or, and then there's another um, group of people that believe, you know, just bring all that forward and let's deal with it as we, as we go forward. What, what's your thoughts on that, Judy? Well, that's an interesting question. I'm glad that you raised that point because it. If you're going to use regression therapy, uh, or whether it's this life or a past life, whatever might show up, be with someone that's reputable and that knows what they're doing, where they're going, someone who is accountable and responsible, that knows how far back it is safe to take you and what you want to bring forward. Just work with really good, really reputable people that will you know, be there and have your best interests at heart at all times. So, Judy, before we get uh, moving along on a different topic here, I'd like to ask you about the afterlife, the other side. I'd like to finish up that kind of that question. And I'd like to hear how heaven looks, how the other side looks. Mm. You come up with the best questions, my word. What does heaven <laughs> look like? Well... Probably a little different for each of us, but what I can say that would make sense, and, and, you know, we hear the proverbial tunnel that we travel through. That doesn't happen every single time. It could happen. Mm -hmm. One of the things is that the colors are more brilliant than anything you can see here. It's almost like you've got a filtering system over your eyes. Even the most beautiful sunset that you can see here would never compare to what will happen there, but the colors are much more brilliant. And while we don't have air to breathe per se because we don't have our physical bodies and we don't require that, it's like a sweetness that you're aware of. There's there's a purity. There's a love. And you see people that are there. When I had my experience, it was the most beautiful grass I had ever seen because I was outdoors a lot and the sounds of birds singing songs in in ways that I did not know birds can do, and I could hear children laughing and playing, and there are many, many beautiful buildings. There were many groups of people. There were 
large uh, facades that could be called a church, and, you know, people mm-hmm. would go to those and sit and talk. But it's not church in the same way that we understand it here, but whatever it is that we see is more brilliant, more clear, more beautiful, more complete with love than anything that we know and understand here. So no matter what a person might be dealing with or going through here, uh, I can say that we're not just going to fall off an abyss. There's not just a dark end. There is something waiting for each of us. Uh, Circumstances might be a little different depending on how we're crossing. Uh, There's so many things that we're going to get into in other shows, but we'll talk about suicides and a lot of other kinds of things. But it's the most beautiful thing filled with the most profound love that you can possibly imagine. There's no love here, and we as parents, we have our children. We love them or we love our animals or we love our partners or whomever, but there, it's nothing. It's very pale in comparison to what that real experience will be like. And we'll come back to that another time because that's a good question. Like I said, whoever's sending you these emails, boy, they are right on target with good questions. <laughs> we will definitely expand on that next time for sure. Um, I, I do want to hear more about um, the people there, the, the structures that look like churches, animals, um, just experiences that um, that you've gone through being on that side. And there's great curiosity with people emailing in, asking about what does that look like, um, how does it feel. Um, but we'll definitely get to that next time. There are a couple other things I want to touch on um, before we wrap up our show today. And one is you have written or produced a new audiobook called Journey, the Quest of the Soul, and it is um, possibly the clearest guide to the working to the spirit and physical world is um, what I have here. It answers the questions, the profound questions, from someone who's walking in both physical and spirit world every day. And you bring about a, a broad range of knowledge, and it's presented in a very gentle, loving quality. You just, you're able to captivate people with this audiobook. Um, I would like for you to expand a little bit more on the book. I also understand that you were just announced as a 2015 Pinnacle Book uh, Achievement Award recipient. Um, so this is this book's getting a lot of buzz. And I just would like for you to just share a little bit about your audiobook with us. Marianne, thank you. That's very kind of you to bring that up. It was something that was such a profound pleasure to go through. What has been interesting to me, and I I don't feel it's over four hours long. Uh, It's an audio book. It's something you can hear and resonate with. But uh, since it was officially released June the 30th, we are now, it has been picked up in eight different countries. And It's not about me. I'm part of it, but it's about knowledge that people can learn and grow from and incorporate into their own lives or into their own belief systems or whatever. Again, it's not about a religion. It's not trying to create a belief system for anyone, but it is a very good go-to place to hear a lot of answers to questions you wouldn't even think about answering. And I had such fun doing this, and our good friend Ken Elliott, he's going to be one of your guests also who has released a great book, Manifesting 1, 2, 3. You don't need three. It's so profound, I can't even begin to tell you what a great piece of material it is. But he was gracious enough to work with me, and we sat in a recording studio for two days uh, uninterrupted. There was no script. I did not know what questions he would ask, but he worked on behalf of listeners with questions from every possible corner of the world, the questions were there. And we did this for two solid days. It's a beautiful piece of work. I'm really proud of it, but it's not about me. It's about the listeners and the people that will be listening to it. But having won the Pinnacle Book Achievement Award, my goodness, what what an incredible surprise. That was extremely nice, very flattering, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, most definitely. And the reviews that I've um, seen on this book are 
um, just life changing, absolutely life changing. People are talking. I have heard to, that from many people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how it's how it's really shift perspective and really change the way they feel and think about certain things that maybe will, um, could have been a block for them in the in the past. It's a very powerful, very powerful book. Um, and the next thing I'd like to touch on is I hear you have a workshop coming up on November 7th in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, absolutely. Good old Atlanta, Georgia, down south. We are just going to have fun. We're going to have an all-day seminar. What your words are saying, it never has been more wonderful to be aware of the words you're speaking than it is today. We all need to be very conscious of things that we say when we say, I think I can, then when you think it's indecisive and you are stopping the process of completion. And the most important thing is to say the words you speak become your reality. So we're going to have an all-day seminar on learning what that means and why the words that were spoken when you were in utero, when you were in your mommy's tummy, when you were conceived and before you were born, the words that are spoken, things that happen every day, how they form up your life, what changes you may need to make in order to change your life completely. And we've had this class uh, in Colorado not too long ago, complete sellout. We were pushing the walls out. It is a real, real good place to be. Atlanta, Georgia, November the 7th, 10 to 5. Great place to be. You can find information on the website. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. I attended the workshop that is out here in Colorado. And uh, for um, listeners that are out in the Colorado area, we had people from all over the world um, come to this workshop. And the messages and uh, the, the feedback that I got from people who are friends of mine who came back and said, oh, my gosh, I, I just can't believe my life has gotten better, things have gotten better. It was absolutely astounding. I couldn't keep track of all the, the, the great the, the kudos that you got and the great information and just huge shifts that people had. You know, it was well, they, absolutely they amazing. They were very kind. We did get a, a lot of really beautiful remarks. But in truth, Mary Ann, I can stand and I can talk, but the real kudos come to the people that are there, that are doing the work, that are changing their lives, because it was the old saying, you can take a lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, so uh, <laughs> lives so were changed, but <laughs> lives were changed, <laughs> but that's because they wanted to change, and it's just powerful, it's just effective, and I'm here sort of participating with it, and I get to see these wonderful things happen, but it's not about me. It's about the people, mm-hmm. empowering them, helping them to be the best that they can be. That's what my whole motivation behind everything that I do is all about. Well, and, and for those that do sign up for the Atlanta workshop, um, I'm, I'm just going to give a little teaser. I'm not giving anything away here, but something wonderful is going to happen. So... Judy always has a, um, well, I'm not going to give it away. Judy always has something wonderful. <laughs> Listen, <that happens. laughs> before, we, before we run out of time, let me go back to the audio book you so graciously opened sure. up. And let me say that if we've got listeners that are out of the country that are listening to the show right now, if you will send an email in with your full address, which will substantiate that you are actually out of country, I will personally send you a free download for a copy of the audiobook Journey, The Quest of the Soul. It's won awards. It's a very powerful tool. But if you're out of country and you'd like to have a copy at no cost to you, send an email to Mary Ann or to myself, and you can find those email addresses on the websites. Mine is judygoodman.com. Send me an email with your out-of-country address, and I'll send you a free download copy of this audio book that is changing people's lives. Okay. Well, do you know I've already gotten two emails. <laughs> My word. One is from Ireland, and the other one is from Australia. Oh, my so, word. Yeah, well. For anyone else that would like to email us requesting a copy of Judy's audiobook, which is a very generous gift, um, that's judygoodman.com. 
And you can email her at judykgoodman at AOL.com, or you can email myself at Marianne Pastana at gmail.com, and we'd be happy to go ahead and get that to you. You want to make sure that you include your address, your email address, and your full name. So, wow. Here comes another one, Japan. So, okay. Oh, my <laughs> Mary Ann, thank you for allowing me to be with you tonight, and thanks to all of the listeners. I've loved it. I've, I've just had a lot of fun. And guess what? I want to come back again, okay? I would love to have you back. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Moments with Mary Ann. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in today. If you'd like to learn more about Judy, You can reach her at her website at judygoodman.com. So thank you for tuning in, and remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.